Okay, YouTube, we're going to go over some things here. You know, this thing with, uh, you know, your gods are getting totally, totally out of hand. Um, Jonathan is basically one of his major foundational uh, scriptures here. It says, uh, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So, I just wanted to do a couple of things, you know, what this really means. If, if you look up Strong's, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Strong's and how Strong's really isn't meant for the purpose that Jonathan is using it for. So I'll get into that in just a minute. But right now I just want to go over the definitions here really quick. Um, it's, it says Elohim, and it says uh, God's in an ordinary sense, but specifically used in, this, in the plural, especially with the article. Uh, of the supreme God occasionally applied to a way of uh, deference to majesta magistrates and sometimes as a superlative. Alright, so now we're going to go back and we're going to look at um, who the children are. Okay? He says, all of you are children. Alright, let's take a look at that. He says, from age 1129, uh, a son as a builder of the family name in the widest sense or literal or figurative relationship including grandson, subject, nation, quality, or condition. So you can see here that it's not specifically uh, referencing angels and things like that. Um, if you scroll down a little further, it talks about son, male child, grandson, uh, children, uh, sons is character characterization, etc., uh, etc. Et it goes on. It even says people of a nation. Um, so again, you know, Johnson's definition of uh, you know we are gods, or you ye are gods, children of the Most High is not inclusive as to us being angels. Um, he's, he's just taking a massive liberty with the text there. Um, this is a commentary of all these different commentators that have done, uh, you know, commentary on this. And not a single one of them, not one of them, I concur with what John is saying on this. Um, I don't know how much of this I uh, should read to you or share with you. I'll, I'll, I... Uh, Maybe I'll go through a little bit of it here. I'll try to keep this video short and sweet and to the point. Here we go. 82 colon 6 dash 8 it is hard for men to have honor put upon them and not to be proud of it. But all the rulers of the earth shall die and all their honor shall be laid in the dust. God governs the world. There is a righteous God to whom we may go and on whom we may depend. This also has respect to the kingdom of the Messiah. Considering the state of affairs in the world, we have need to pray that the Lord Jesus would speedily rule over all nations in truth, righteousness, and peace. Okay, so basically what it's, uh, you know, talking about here is these so-called gods, they're magistrates, they're rulers, and they're puffed up. And so what God is doing is letting them know, hey, you know, you, you may be gods, or you may be rulers, or you may be magistrates, or you may rule over the people, but you're going to die like men. These people are drunk with their power, okay? And so that's what this is about. And I can go through, you know, many of these. I'll go through one more, okay? Here we go. And then I'm, I'm going to shift to something else. So hang in there with me, please. But ye shall die like men. You are mortal, like other people. This fact you have forgotten. You have been lifted up with pride, as if you were in fact more exalted than other people, as if you were not subject to the law which consigns all people to the grave. An ancient monarch directed his servants to address him each morning in this language, Remember, sire, that thou art mortal. No more salutary truth can be impressed on the minds of the rich and the great than that they are, in this respect, like other people, like the poorest, the meanest of the race, that they will die under similar forms of disease, that they will experience the same pain, 
that all which is fearful in death will be their portion as well as that of the most obscure, and that in the grave, with whatever pomp and splendor they descend to it, or however magnificent the monument which may be reared, over the spot where they lie, there will be the same offensive and repulsive process of decay which occurs in the most humble grave in the country churchyard. Why, then, oh, why should man be proud? Exactly. See, that's exactly what I was saying. They're puffed up, they're prideful, and, um, you know, they've forgotten who they are, okay, and where they came from. So what Jonathan is doing again is he's, he's taking scripture and he's twisting it out of context, and I've always said he's twisting scripture. Okay, now I want to talk to you a little bit about using a concordance, and, and this is really important, and this explains Jonathan's mistake um, with the way he uses the concordance. James Strong himself said that he should that it, the concordance shouldn't be used the way Jonathan is using it. I'm going to prove that to you in just a minute here. But listen to this real quick. The meaning of the lechm is that intended by the author using it. The Strong's concordance often sheds little light on what this meaning is in context. Therefore, claiming the meaning of a specific word in a given context is X on the basis of the Strong's concordance is not a reliable claim. You hear that? It's not a reliable claim. You have to do a lot more research. You can't just cherry pick, you know, different alleged meanings. Now this is just a quick reference um, to an article, Strong's is not a concord is a concordance, it's not a lexicon. Alright, so now we're going to get back into something else here. Um, this is another detailed uh, thing, and I'm not going to go through all of it because it's huge, and I know you guys are pressed for time. But uh, it's entitled, The Problem with Using Strong's Concordance Dictionary, Greek Words, Word Studies, etc., etc. And we're going to, uh, this gives the history of Strong. And understand that Strong was not <coughs> accredited. All of his alleged uh, degrees were honorary. That's important. Okay? And this thing goes and it explains how, you know, Strong's mainly uses the root word, but if you want to go a lot deeper, you, you have to use other sources. And um, so we're going to listen to what, um, uh, and, and here it is, talking about Scammers University and Degree. Um, you know, these, these people that hold these doctorates that are honorary, and they, they didn't sweat, and they didn't earn it, they didn't prove that they know what they're talking about. And, and, you know, Strong's, in this case, he didn't have a degree uh, uh, that would qualify him to, uh, to the degree that people try and say he's uh, you know, an expert. Okay, these are uh, words directly out of the, the preference of Strong's Dictionary. And uh, I'm going to play these for you really quick. Okay, this is a, the Hebrew portion. You, you need to hear this from the horse's mouth. Strong's preface to the dictionary Hebrew preface. This work, although prepared as a companion to the exhaustive concordance, to which it is specifically adapted, is here paged and printed so that it can be bound separately, in the belief that a brief and simple dictionary of the biblical Hebrew and Shaldi will be useful to students and others who do not care at all times to consult a more precise and elaborate lexicon, and it will be particularly serviceable to many who are unable to turn conveniently and rapidly, amid the perplexities and details of foreign characters with which the pages of Genesis and FIST Bristol, to the fundamental and essential points of information that they are seeking. Even scholars will find here, not only all of the strictly verbal character which they most frequently want in ordinary consultation of a lexicon, but numerous original suggestions, relations, and distinctions, commonly made and clearly put, which are not unworthy of their attention, especially in the affinities of roots and the classification of meanings. The design of the volume, being purely lexical, does not include grammatical, archaeological, or exegetical details, which would have swelled its size and encumbered its plan. 
Okay, that was his comments uh, regarding Hebrew. Now here's his comments regarding Greek. Take an original Greek preface, written by Strong himself. This work is entirely similar in origin, method, and design to the author's Hebrew dictionary, and may be employed separately, for a corresponding purpose and with a like result, namely, to be serviceable to many who have not the wish or the ability to use a more capricious lexicon of the Greek New Testament. In this case also even scholars will find many suggestions and explanations not unworthy of their attention. Okay. Strong's Concordance is not a translation of the Bible, nor is it intended as a translation tool. The use of Strong's numbers is not a substitute for professional translation of the Bible from Hebrew and Greek into English by those with formal training in ancient languages and in the literature of the cultures in which the Bible was written. Since Strong's Concordance identifies the original words in Hebrew and Greek, those without adequate training sometimes misinterpret Strong's numbers to change the Bible from its accurate meaning simply by taking the words out of cultural context. The use of Strong's numbers does not consider figures of speech, metaphors, idioms, euphemisms, common phrases, cultural references, references to historical events or alternate meanings used by original writers to express their thoughts in their own language at the time. As such, professionals and amateurs alike must consult a number of contextual tools to reconstruct these cultural backgrounds. Many scholarly Greek and Hebrew lexicons, for example, the Brown, Driver, Briggs Hebrew Lexicon, Thayer's Greek Lexicon, and Vine's Bible Dictionary, also use Strong's numbers for cross-referencing, encouraging hermeneutical approaches to study. Okay. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. I mean, he just lays it all out. Basically, like I said, is uh, he's not using it the way it was designed and created to be used. And it's creating massive problems with people's understandings. I'll explain a little bit more here. For Bible students who don't use Hebrew and Greek, the Strong Concordance is a popular tool available online. One, but it has a serious limitation namely, the dictionary in the back of Strong's is not really a dictionary at all and should not be used to find the real, true, or root meaning of the word I will use the KJV version of Strong's since that is the one version I have on hand, but the same thing applies with the ESV or NAS editions. Okay, so there you go. So again, the basic foundational issue here is, you know, Kleck is misusing the interpretation of scripture and he's trying to use a tool that's not designed to do what he's doing with it. And um, it's catastrophic because he's leading so many people off the off the path that uh, you know I, I just don't know how to express myself so you know here we go I mean, and I get these hate comments all the time this guy Brian he says you sir are evil and I wrote him and I said I love you too Brian please explain how you came to your conclusions that said um, while I have a, cle a clecite like is yours attention um, perhaps you can please explain why your cult leader has a Baphomet demon on the back of his head inquiring minds would like to know and he never addressed that okay he just wrote back and he basically says that Jesus appeared to him and kind of another collect situation and um, gave him all these spiritual gifts and I said so do you think that you're a fallen angel too like Jonathan says he is, and if so, can you please prove that with scripture? And um, so he, he points out this Psalm 82, 7. And um, I said, hmm, so tell me, uh, why or why can't a Klekite ever answer a simple question without dancing like Michael Jackson? Was the question hard, yes or no? And I said, do you consider yourself a fallen angel? 
the guy never answers the question. Okay? And then um, it goes on and, and it progresses to, um, he's talking about, ye are gods, Elohim, angels, God blinded you, sir. You know, he says, God blinded me, yet God doesn't want anybody to perish. So why would God blind me? Um, could it be that the devil deceived him? That's kind of what I'm thinking here. So anything, uh, I'm almost done here, but I, you know, I went through explaining this whole deal um, that you know Strong's is not designed to be a word study, and that's the way John is, John is using it. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'm going to have to do a lot of editing because I had a lot of dogs barking and cars going by and everything else, and I apologize. But this is key. I'd like to ask you guys to please share this information because, you know, people are going to burn. Jonathan is teaching to know Jesus. He's teaching that Satan created man. We have serpent skin. And we're fallen angels. And the Bible doesn't say anything about that. So please, 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 you know, if you're not going to get involved, if you're not going to make your own videos, uh, please share the information, like the video, put it on a playlist, uh, do something to help me get this out because I'm like the Lord. I don't want any to perish. I'm very concerned about it. So with that, have a good day and thank you for your time and thanks for listening. Bye now. God bless.